Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I'm Paul TX141 Walsh, welcoming you to some all new World of Warships gameplay on our channel today. In this episode we're going to be setting sail in our tier 5 American destroyer known as the Nicholas, and we're in a tier 7 match on the domination version of New Dawn, but we're not alone. We are sailing as part of a platoon of three, also featuring Zauron in his tier 5 Russian cruiser known as the Kirov, and Ilmari in his tier 5 Japanese cruiser known as the Furutaka. Now the overall analysis and emphasis of today's gameplay is not around an incredible game per se. Indeed we are not going to carry the team, we are not going to be leading by a huge margin by the end of it, and we are not going to do anything fancy in order to help secure the win. Today is a more casual game as I am getting back into the grips of World of Warships and what you are seeing here is my first game in the Nicholas after a two, two and a half month hiatus from playing World of Warships in general. Now the reason I took a hiatus was just simply because I did not have the time to play this game alongside playing Armoured Warfare, War Thunder and juggling my own personal life. But now an opportunity has opened up and I will be playing World of Warships in tune with War Thunder and Armoured Warfare in equal measure and hopefully bring some more World of Warships videos to this channel in the near future. But coming back to the gameplay, we have started off in the southwestern spawn and we are going to head towards the southeastern corner of the map to capture C taking the lead role here as we lead our team towards the objective. And all the directionality here is being referenced using the minimap in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, and I do apologise for how small it is, I will enlarge it as of the next World of Warships video. So as we make our way over we can see that we have attracted a good portion of our team, including our two platoon mates, but that would be expected perhaps. Now having loaded our torpedoes, I'm going to point out now that we're not going to be really using our torpedoes to do any damage, but they will come in use, but more on that in a bit. And as the weather clears up when we near sea, we are a little bit in front of our teammates, so hopefully we will spot the enemy ships, particularly the capital ships or even the cruisers, and when I say capital ships I mean the battleships ideally, and we start off by picking up on an ARP HEA. Now I believe that is a Congo or a Nagato, but don't quote me on that. I'd like some clarification in the comments, if possible please. Now as we near sea here, we're going to pick up on a number of other enemy ships. We shall see a Molotov very shortly, if I remember correctly. Not quite yet. There we go, a Molotov, and we're seeing some fire from the Miyoko. Now the Miyoko is a lot closer here, but in front of them, as we're about to detect, is going to be a Mahan. Now we have detected the Mahan just before they spot us, so we decide to fire down a torpedo wall off of our port side. Whereby as our torpedoes range in and head towards the target here, what we've essentially done is cut off the Mahan's ability to come charging down on our port side in order to fire off a torpedo barrage at us and our Dijavisca, which is training just behind us. Now with our fire we also trigger our smoke here to hide ourselves as we finish off capturing C, we achieved a couple of hits on the Mahan and set them on fire this is very likely they will use their fire extinguisher to put that fire out and this causes them to waste a resource for a good period of time. Which means most likely they are now going to have to try and creep away from the engagement as they do not have the ability to repair themselves again and therefore recover a lost engine, steering or take out another fire that we may inflict or our teammates may inflict. And we dodge their torpedoes that they used in retaliation as we fire down another stream off of our starboard side towards the Miyoko to prevent them from coming through between the two islands. Now unfortunately as we try to break away we do take a nasty hit from the Molotov, it takes away approximately 2000 R hit points and we do not have that many to spare, i.e. 13100 when we are at full health, so we cannot afford to take another hit. But fortunately before we got hit we did pick up the capture points on C, so we have secured the objective for the time being and we can see how the majority of our team have pressed towards C and a slightly smaller portion have headed towards B. Now with B also in our team's possession we're going to see that our team in the centre of the map will try to make their way towards A in the long haul and our team are going to gradually come around and engage the majority of the enemy fleet that have pushed towards C and are sort of holding between B and C. Now the Miyoko has charged a little bit too far forward and they are about to die. Zaron picks up the kill on them. And as we make our way around now We've noticed that the enemy Molotov and the enemy ARP HEA are together and quite close. Now we do not have the ability to chase them down simply because if we do so we isolate ourselves and even with our speed and our ability to lay down our speed booster and a smoke screen in two and a half minutes time we really cannot afford to throw away this ship so early. So instead we're just going to fire off a couple of barrages off of our 
port side for the time being, using our 127mm main cannon. Now we have four of them and they fire with a reload rate of four seconds. Although we've dropped that down to 3.6 seconds thanks to one of our commander skills. I cannot remember which one. We're starting to land some hits on the enemy ARPEA. We are more going for a fire rather than knocking down their health point pool per hit, as a fire will cause them to bleed health over a longer period of time, or at the very least cause them to use up their repair kit, and as a result, I believe it's called a damage control party, and as a result that means they are vulnerable to future fires for a good portion of time. Now as we finish off shooting at them, we notice that Akirov is coming into the frame, i.e. starting to lead the enemy fleet, so we decide to switch our fire towards them, to support our teammates, and also try to whittle down this cruiser which could be a key threat. And what we have actually done is baited the attention of the Kirov, which is what we want to do. We are a destroyer, and as a result we have the limited gun power, but we have a smaller profile. So we want to lure hits away from our bigger ships, so that way they can get in close and do the damage. Alternatively just train their guns on their opponents, as Zauron is trying to at the moment, without taking return fire. But unfortunately here there is a small misplay for me, and that is I've allowed myself to fall too far behind, one of our cruisers, I Zaron's Kirov, and this means that Zaron is now going to get ripped to pieces by the enemy team because I'm not there to act as the potential bait for the enemy team. I come around, get knocked in the side by a bleacher visca, my apologies for that, and I start to make my way towards the enemy Kirov, but unfortunately I am making up for lost time a little bit too late. As we can see from the shells flying over, they are being aimed in quite heavily at Zaron at this point, the Kirov fires off another barrage, and as I throw another barrage onto the Kirov here, they get knocked out by one of our teammates, but unfortunately we lose Zaron entirely from the match. So I've let the team down a little bit there. So now I move back into the lead role, although we also have a Hatsu Harry making their way up as well, but they are most likely going for the stealth destroyer role. I, by using their good camo rating, I believe their concealment factor in order to get close and release a set of torpedoes, which can do a lot of damage and they come from a hidden source, according to the enemy team's perspective. So as we make our way forward, we're trying to range in some shots on the enemy Nagato. Now I'm assuming here that the Hatsu Haru in front of us has not been spotted yet, so as a result we will be the first ship that the Nagato sees. And this means that they're most likely going to try training their guns on us, if not our ships behind us. As if we look at the minimap, it is myself, our Bleacher Visca, alongside us, and a couple of cruisers a little bit further back, including Il Mari's Furutaka. Now again here, being a little bit ignorant of the way my ship's going, I actually crash into the Bleacher Visca once again. As you can hear the horn in the background, my apologies once more, tunnel vision at its finest. And we do rain some shots down on the Nagato and actually set them on fire. Now again here we are hoping to bleed their health or alternatively force them to use their damage control party. As we see very shortly the fire will go out and they have used up that resource. Which means now if we do get another fire on them they will bleed a lot of health over time or if our teammates do they will achieve the same effect. The fire has not gone out quite just yet. As we can see now they are dying down, and that is the damage control repair party taken away from them. Now launch our barrage away, we have to break away because we're out of range, but we can see the Nagato here has fired back at us, a couple of armour piercing rounds, two of them hitting us, and we're now down to just over 50% of our health, so we have baited a good portion of fire away from our teammates. Now with that we have to pull away and we've let up Legia Visca, which I believe is a premium tier 7 destroyer, a Polish one if I remember correctly, correct me if I'm wrong, is now taking the lead, taking up for the role that we have been trying to do so far. That is only fair, they're at a greater amount of health so it's nice to switch up the role, and here we're sitting back and just watching the engagement occur. We do not have the ability to hit Nagata, the Nagato at this range, and they're sailing away from us towards their friendly Molotov. And if we get caught in the guns of the Molotov with their high muzzle velocity at the moment, we're going to get ripped to pieces. So, we start heading towards B, because we can look at the scores and we can see that our team has A and C, and the enemy team only has B. So we have a lot of points in our favour, and we have two cap points to their one, which means we just need to take our time and we can win this game through scoring points and a war of attrition on that front, rather than having to sink enemy ships. We can see here how our Bleacher Visca is really trying to take a lead role, and they are losing a lot of health for it. So now we're going to start making our way back up towards them gradually, not directly, as we want to try and cut off the sailing path of the Nagato and the Molotov, who are currently on our starboard. I believe our starboard bow. And as we do so, we can see here the Molotov is trying to act as a screen for the Nagato, who is losing a good portion of their health, and the Molotov has now 
attract the attentions of our teammates. And all the way through this note, how we'll marry and one of our battleships has sat behind us throughout this being able to use the range of their guns without having to feel the need to get in front of us, meaning that we are providing that screen for our teammates to a good extent. Now the Molotov here hits the island and unfortunately our first barrage completely misses but now we're starting to range in as the Molotov goes into full reverse. We get some nice hits here and we can see how we can gradually build up a good portion of damage with our high explosive rounds and Il Mary finishes off the Molotov with a wonderful devastating strike, most likely at least one citadel hit. Now we carry our momentum forward here and we can see how the Legato is gradually, gradually heading towards death, although they do trigger their repair consumable, I can't remember the name of it, but the one that enables them to build a bit of health over a little period of time. We can see it in action right here, as we all start to range in on the Gatto to bring them down. And really they are fighting a losing battle. But nonetheless it is a good opportunity for us to try and range in a couple more shots, so we will do so. Right at the apex of our range, but getting a little bit closer now as we get within 10 kilometers of them. And our slower muzzle velocity mean that sometimes it takes a little while for us to range in effectively. We get a couple of scratch rounds on them, i ones that hit but do no damage. As we fire off our last barrage here, they burn to death. Now, having seen that the Nagato has been taken out, we start to make our way towards B. There are three enemy ships remaining, two destroyers and one cruiser. Apologies, one battleship. You can see how rusty I am at this game. Now instead of going towards A, which would be a potential idea because that is where the enemy are, let us secure the win first. And we've even had one of our teammates saying, destroyers, please capture B. And that is already my intention. I would rather secure the win for the team than rush off and try to get more damage dealt to the enemy team or even some kills. Simply because there is no need to here. We are 800 points to roughly the enemy team's 450. And by capturing B, we will pick up another set of points increase our score earning rate for every four seconds or three seconds depending on how it's done now and this means that we can essentially just gradually cause the enemy team to lose the match for a war of attrition on points as mentioned earlier. Now we can see there is the Mahem from earlier and one other destroyer that are the two surviving destroyers and we also have that ARP HEA which is the remaining battleship. Now by heading towards B we are going to close the range of the engagement and at this point Il Mary is heading towards B as well but at a longer range they are going to be coming off to our port side. Now I point out to my teammate here that the second destroyer will be coming from A, they've both been over there because of the quick rate at which the enemy team did capture A. We can see at the Farragut the other destroyer is gradually being knocked out by a Bleacher Visca although it was a 2 to 1 engagement whereby the Farragut and the Mahan managed to bring down the Bleacher Visca very rapidly and the RP here yeah, may have even had some shots on them and we start to capture B. Now to deter the Farragut and the Mahan from coming through and directly into B at this point, we launch down another torpedo barrage off to our starboard side and this means they will not be able to come through to B unless they want to sail into a wave of torpedoes or they will have to direct themselves around it or through it and that will cost them time and enable us to pick up B. And we also use our smoke to make sure we're no longer spotted and our opponents cannot get a clean shot on us to reset the capture zone. And as we carry our momentum through here, the smoke screen has now been used and it is in position. Il Mary has been able to advance through the smoke screen as he has cut off behind me. I, from my stern, been able to follow me through and head towards the two destroyers. And we pick up the capture on B for our second capture of the day. And we start to make our way indirectly down towards the south. We want to come around behind the destroyers if possible, or at least off to a flank. Meanwhile, Il Mary is going to take the brunt in his Furutaka and they essentially take the attention of the destroyers away from me, but I will come back and support in the near future. Now having reloaded our torpedoes, we need them to be active because the range of engagement here is going to close very rapidly. We are a set of destroyers engaging one another, and destroyers in general are very fast. Now the Farragut is spotted by Il Mary, or at least I would assume, and the two are exchanging words over the course of high explosive and armour piercing shells. Now the Farragut is charging through here because they need to get into the capture zone IB to try and resuscitate the game for their team, and the Mahan is also doing the same. So here we throw down a torpedo towards the Farragut, 
What this prevents is the Mahan coming across and trying to launch a set of torpedoes off what would be their port side in order to be able to take us out. And this also draws the attention of the Farragut towards us because we're so close. Now we finished off in a single barrage for our first kill, and this means now we have got a perfect set of starboard shots on the Mahan, who can only bring two of their guns into play for the time being, whilst we can use a full broadside, and they have to weave their way through our torpedoes as they are headed towards us across our torpedo trajectory. So if they decided to go for a torpedo barrage us, they would have gone straight into our torpedoes, so they had to sail through. So that has brought us time to even up the score, whereby they technically do have the ability to outfire us with their slightly higher reload rate, if I remember correctly. But instead, we have played this right, and whilst we are losing a good chunk of our health, we fire off our final barrage and knock them out for our second and final kill of the game. And with that, our team achieves a thousand points on the score, and the game ends. So it is time for us to take a look at the post-game stats. Well, that was quite a pleasant reintroduction to the world of World of Warships and we can see that we were rewarded quite handsomely for it, picking up 168,645 credits and 3,096 experience. We can see that we also picked up a minor fine and a minor bit of compensation for the two collisions we caused with our friendly Bleacher Visca. And in terms of our battle performance, we can see that we caused 71 target hits, 4 incapacitations, 2 ship destructions, 2 fires, 8 base defends and 2 base captures. Transitioning over to the team score, we can see how despite being in the lowest tier of ships available in the match today, we came first by comparison to the rest of our team, picking up 314 experience more than the second place player on our team. Now this was not because we carried our team per se, and we did not go out on a limb in order to help our team achieve the victory, hence the rather small margin, but instead we acted as part of the team wherever possible throughout the duration of the match mostly acting as one of the lead destroyers in the group that headed towards C and then eventually towards the B flag in order to constantly switch between the objective and spotting and acting as a distraction on the larger enemy ships, i.e. their cruisers and battleships, whereby we're able to sit in the front, providing our team with the ability to see the enemy's configuration before they were able to reciprocate the favour and spot our team, and this meant that we technically had the first shot on our opponents wherever possible. But when we came up on the objectives, we transitioned over to capture them safely and securely, using our smoke screen in order to provide a buffer to allow us to achieve the capture without being interfered with at any point. So by playing the objective and hunting down the enemy ships, we came first, but at the same time helped our team to stay alive and keep in the game until the very end. Delving down into our detailed report, we can see how we find a total of 189 high explosive shells for our main battery achieving only 71 hits, dealing 21,472 damage, and with the two fires we caused, we picked up a further 4,395 damage, leading to a grand total of 25,867 for today. Now this is a rather low value, and as a result acts as a reflection on how we encompass the two roles of damage dealer slash distraction, whereby we're trying to distract the larger enemy ships from shooting at our teammates and make them look towards us, which we did on a number of occasions, and the other role of objective player, whereby we held our fire and remained concealed when we captured both C and B. And as we go further down into our torpedoes, we can see how we fired a grand total of 24, and none of them hit. Now this may seem odd, we are playing a destroyer, and torpedoes are a very important part of a destroyer's life cycle. But we would wager that we used our torpedoes just as effectively as acting as a screening force, whereby we used our range of 5.5km to inform the enemy team not to come close, or to force them down certain paths to allow us to stay alive in the long haul. One key example would be when we were capturing C, whereby we used our torpedoes in order to cause the enemy Miyoko to be diverted away from C and prevent them from coming between the two islands to try and knock us out, or at least intervene in the capture of C. The other and more important example in my opinion is when we had finished off capturing B at the very end and we went into the 2 vs 1 engagement potentially against the enemy Farragut and the enemy Mahan, whereby the Farragut was a single barrage kill, but we fired all of our torpedoes towards the Farragut as the enemy Mahan would have had to have traversed towards their ally in order to get a clean broadside on us and potentially bring their torpedoes into play. And in doing so this meant that the enemy Mahan had to navigate through our torpedo wall to get to us and bring up their broadside. In the meantime, we managed to get off approximately four to five full broadsides on the Mahan before they could reciprocate the favour, enabling us to do more damage than they could possibly do and allow us to stay alive and knock out the Mahan in the long haul. And finally, coming on to our credits and XP, we can see after auto repair and ammunition auto resupply, 
we picked up a remaining total of 152,553 silver credits, and in our experience, we picked up that base amount of 2,064 and multiplied it by one and a half to get that grand total of 3,095 for our first victory of the day in the Nicholas. In conclusion then, hopefully today we have demonstrated how one does not necessarily need to carry their team to victory in order to assure their team of a win and at the same time pick up a good amount of experience earned. Here in our Nicholas we acted as the leading destroyer, whereby we made sure that we were at the front of our fleet as they made their way around to a pair of objectives, spotting the enemy ships as they came towards us and at the same time being in a position to distract enemy fire away from our larger ships and potentially pick up the objective points, i.e. two capture points in the case of this domination game, when the opportunity arose. Meaning that in the end, as part of the team, we had assured that victory for us was a foregone conclusion. And so I've been TX141, and if you've enjoyed this video why not leave a like, comment or subscribe for future World of Warships gameplays on this channel. But until next time ladies and gentlemen, take care, and fair seas.